Greetings, I'm Don the Crown, and today I want to talk to you about crafting a one-handed sword. In this video, I'll be focusing on the best one-handed sword for a pure physical crit impale setup. Please check the description to ensure that this video is up to date with the current game. For this video, I'm focusing on making a good sword for my Hack of All Trades Berserker build by multi-modding a flaring jeweled foil. We'll use the jeweled foil base because it has the best overall balance of DPS, critical strike chance, attack speed, and has a great implicit crit multi-modifier. Currently the adds physical damage mod, aka flaring, is the strongest single modifier on a foil that will have hits can't be evaded crafted onto it. In order to craft this as easy as possible, we're going to start with an item level 77 through 80 jeweled foil. The reason we want an item level 77 through 80 foil is that there are several prefixes that only appear on higher level items that we want to avoid. Now, landing a tier 1 percentage physical or hybrid roll on a regal would likely be a big windfall, so if you want to go for that extremely small chance, you can use an item level 83 or higher foil. Before we actually start crafting, let's talk about an optional step, quality. It's currently possible to use perfect fossils to raise a non-unique's quality to a maximum of 30%. This can be somewhat expensive, so alternative options are to use Helix 3 Star Transportation Bench to raise your weapon to 28% quality, or to use Beast Crafting at the very end of your crafting to corrupt your blade to 30%. The reason that quality matters is because on a weapon, each percentage of quality is equal to 1% increased local physical damage, so this helps squeeze out a bit more of your sword. Now let's really start crafting. First, take your sword and make it magic blue rarity by using an orb of transmutation on a normal white sword. If you have a rare yellow sword, just use a scour to make it white. Next, use Orb of Alterations to change the mods on the sword until you land flaring. You can hold shift in order to use multiple alterations without having to re-click your currency. I like to craft in my stash with a search for flaring active. This will dim your sword until you land the correct mod, which should help reduce the chances of you rolling past it. This process can take a while, as flaring is a rather rare mod. Once you land flaring, your sword will either have a suffix or it won't. If you have landed a nice attack speed roll tier 3 or higher, or a great crit roll tier 2 or higher, congratulations, you may have just saved yourself an exult in the crafting process. Now you have the choice whether or not you want to imprint your sword. Imprinting takes a snapshot of your sword and gives you the option to return to that state as long as your sword has not been corrupted. If you really hate alteration rolling, or have landed an amazing suffix, you may want to imprint. In my case, I have a sword that has tier 1 flat fizz and tier 1 attack speed, so I am going to imprint. I've also gone ahead and divined these two rolls to near perfection. To imprint, you simply need to use the beast craft recipe using a Krakic Camaro. If you don't have one of these yourself, you can search for them on the official site like so. Make sure when you're trading for these that the beast says Krakic Camaro. Next, use the beast orb in your menagerie to add it to your collection. Put the sword on the altar and activate. Kill the beasts and whatever you do, do not die or leave as you lose the beasts. Once the encounter is over, an imprint will hit the ground. Hold on to this. This imprint will only ever work one time with the sword you just imprinted and has no value traded to others. Next up, you are going to regal your sword. This will make it a rare yellow sword and add an additional modifier. There is a very small chance that you've just added an amazing second or third modifier to your sword. If so, congrats. You can skip the next step. The next step is going to be using an orb of annulment to remove the bad modifiers from your sword. Annulment orbs remove completely random modifiers from items. So good luck! It's important to note that any suffix that is not critical strike chance or attack speed is considered bad, and any prefix that is not flat physical or high percentage physical or hybrid physical is bad. 
The sole exception being if you're playing an Overwhelm Slayer. If you remove your flaring modifier, you either need to start all over again or use the imprint you made earlier and either re-imprint or not. If you've successfully removed the unwanted modifiers from your sword, it's time to multi-mod your item. Multi-mod is the term we use to describe an item that has the modifier can have multiple crafted modifiers added to it along with several crafted mods. Here are the mods we'll be using on our sword and where they can be found as of 3.7. Percentage physical damage coming from the Relic Chambers map. Hits can't be evaded, which is from vague and veiled items. You can have multiple crafted modifiers from the Pale Court. Increased attack speed from the Crimson Temple map. And then percentage critical strike chance and quality from veiled items. Now, if you already have uh, critical strike naturally on your weapon, you can also use quality attack speed as well. It's just the critical strike quality is better than attack speed quality generally. Now that you've gotten all your mods on the sword, the last step is to divine it. While this isn't necessarily a requirement, you can get a little bit more damage off of your sword if you have great rolls. I generally put a perfectly and an imperfectly rolled sword into path of building to figure out where mine falls. Last but not least, you can add white sockets like I have here using Verici's three star research bench if you want or you can corrupt to 30% quality if you're 100% done crafting and have low quality on the sword. If you really want to swing for the fences, you could try to annul the can have multiple crafted modifiers and then slam a new suffix onto the sword. However, this can be rather expensive to have a very small chance as a good result. That's it for my guide. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them below or come by my stream at twitch.tv slash Don the Crown. Thank you very much.